What weighs 6 kilograms contains over 100 billion living cells and 1 million kilometers of interconnecting fiber? Your brain. It's the most fascinating and most evolved object known to mankind. And every single decision to purchase your products and services is made by one. Luckily for us, Christoph and Patrick have found that each and every one of them has a huge buy button. And in 10 minutes or less, we're going to figure out how to find it. So as it turns out, you have three brains. Okay, not really three brains, but three distinct parts that operate as separate organs with different structures. Each of them has a separate purpose, and understanding which one does which is the key to finding the buy button. The new brain thinks, the middle brain feels, and the old brain decides. The old brain is our fight or flight brain. According to leading neuroscientist Robert Ornstein, it is concerned solely with our survival and has been doing so for millions of years. If you've ever been in a sales situation where you were certain that you had the best solution for your prospect and then they went somewhere else, here's the formula for making sure that never happens again. Selling probability equals pain times claim times gain times old brain cubed. Step number one, we're going to diagnose the pain. Is there a doctor in the house? Diagnosing a prospect's pain isn't a new technique. However, what other sales courses might not have taught you is that there's some very necessary conditions, four of them to be exact, to assessing whether or not a pain will lead to a sale. First, this step is obvious. You need to identify the pain. It's either going to be financial pain, strategic pain, or personal pain. Any of those three will do. This is where, however, mere mortals stop. You, on the other hand, are an amazing sales machine and you're going to go all the way. Second, you're going to figure out the intensity of the pain. The more intense the pain, the greater the chance of the sale. Third, you need to know how urgent the need to alleviate the pain is. If there are other fires your prospect has to put out before she even considers your product or service, there isn't going to be much urgency there. Lastly, and this is key, you need to know that your prospect acknowledges the pain. It isn't enough for you to see that he should be in pain, they have to acknowledge it. If you don't have all four of these conditions, you don't have real pain. Step number two, differentiate your claims. Coco Chanel once said that in order to be irreplaceable, one must always be different. If there was ever a recipe for success, it is this. The authors tell us we should find one or several unique attributes about our solutions so we can strongly assert our claims. However, here's how you move to the front of the class. Make claims that eliminate the strongest principal pain that your prospect has. That's what will motivate them to buy from you. Step number three, demonstrate the gain. Simply put, highlighting your value proposition isn't enough. You have to prove it. Why? The old brain, as research has found, is especially resistant to adopting new ideas or behaviors, especially buying from you. How do you get over this resistance? Through tangible, hard, evidence. Here are the four ways you can do that. First, you could provide a vision. Steve Jobs is a master of this. People line up around the block to watch him unveil the latest and greatest from Apple computers. This can be very persuasive if done right, but certainly sits at the bottom of the gain totem pole. Second, you could provide data to back up your claims. Consider this demonstration of gain. Our product will save you an average of five cents per transaction. Since you average 10,000 transactions a day, you will save $500 a day, or $175,000 per year. That's getting better. Third, you can provide a demo of your product or service. 
You don't necessarily have to go through all of the features or functionality, but providing your prospect with an inside look at how you'll actually get rid of their pain is very reassuring. Lastly, you could go with the ultimate proof, a customer story. Nobody wants to be the first to try something. Seeing that you have other customers who have had their pains removed is a huge deal. There are no assumptions or visions necessary because as they say, the proof is in the pudding. Step number four, delivering to the old brain. If you remember from the formula, this is by far the most important factor in the equation. So, if you're going to remember anything from these 10 minutes, make it this step. There are six message building blocks and seven impact boosters. I'm going to focus on the ones that I think will help you the most just by hearing them and you're going to have to go buy the book to find the rest. Building block number one is the grabber. If you've ever started off a presentation with who you are and what your background is or an overview of your company, do not pass go and do not collect $200. As David Ogilvy once said, if you're selling fire extinguishers, start with the fire. Building block number two is the big picture. The visual nerve carries information 40 times faster than the auditory nerve. So use big picture to tap into the old brain. But let's get something very clear here. A PowerPoint slide with bullet points and text is not a visual aid. Impact booster number one is wording with you. As it turns out, we, as human beings, listen better when people talk to us rather than at us. Why, you ask? Well, because nobody gives a crap about you. They care about themselves. In fact, a study done at Yale University has shown the most powerful combinations of words in the English language to be, thank you, would you please, what do you think, and I am proud of you. Enough said. Impact booster number five is learning styles. There are three different ways in which people learn, auditory, kinesthetic, and visual. Most people strongly leads toward one of those three styles. So, especially in situations where you can determine the learning style of the people you're talking to, talk back to them in a way in which they learn. For instance, as the authors state, do you see what I mean? Works great for a visual person. I hear you works better for an auditory person. And it feels good, doesn't it? Is effective for kinesthetic learners. Impact booster number seven, less is more. As George Washington once said, let your discourse with men of business be short and comprehensive. Notice that he said short and comprehensive. Average men are either short or comprehensive. You on the other hand, a neuro marketing superstar will be both at the same time. So I asked Christophe, our million dollar question, why does the world need your book? And this is what he said. Um, the world needs uh, at all levels to improve communication and flow of information between individuals. It can be for the purpose of selling goods that people need to improve their health, to improve their vitality, to improve their own business. But it, it's also um, remarkable to me that you can use neuromarketing and you can use the principles of our book to create messages that could change people's uh, self-destructive behaviors. You could argue that it really is tri critical for the world to, uh, to, to help people not um, pick up smoking habits, to talk to their kids about not um, using drugs. And, and once again, you can come at messaging from a very old-fashioned, new brain. Here's the information, son. I'm sure you're going to figure it out in your new brain that you're not supposed to drink and drive. And I assure you that there is an alternative way, which comes from many of the principles we share in our book, that is going to have way more effectiveness because it is speaking a language that the primal area in your son's brain is going to understand in milliseconds.
Hi, I'm Rhonda, and this is an exclusive audiobook video recorded for the Audiobook Master Channel. Enjoy your audiobook and have fun learning. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so you'll get updated on our next upload. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and say your thoughts about the book we just covered. Do you want to listen to a summary or review of a book that we haven't covered in the past? Say it in the comments below or send us a message. Don't forget to check our other uploads. Enjoy listening!